Boletus is the most desirable edible mushroom in our forests. From this video you will learn how to create favorable conditions for growing Boletus in your own garden. How to make a mycelium from Boletus mushrooms collected in the forest, I will show you a recipe on how to make a soil substrate for growing Boletes yourself. In what conditions you should grow Boletes, how to properly inoculate the mycelium, what trees are needed for a given species of Boletus and how to care for the mycelium so that it survives in your home garden. If conditions are favorable, we can grow our own forest mushrooms in our garden, even the most popular ones, such as Boletes. They appear in nature from May to November, in coniferous, deciduous and mixed forests. The Belete forms mycorrhiza with spruces, pines, beeches and oaks, sometimes with hornbeam or linden. Occurs singly or in small groups, in bright places and on the edge of the forest. The occurrence of beletes depends on the phenomenon of mycorrhiza, i.e. a specific symbiosis of plant roots with species of fungi adapted to their needs. It is a process that benefits both parties. Trees can draw more valuable nutrients and water from the ground, and they also gain resistance to many diseases. In return, the fungi receive carbohydrates produced in the process of photosynthesis. A common phenomenon is that red toadstools usually predict an outbreak of Boletus. Where toadstools grow, Boletus mushrooms can also grow. Ready to get your fungi on? Let's see what happens when a Boletus and a red toadstool share the same forest floor. Deep in the heart of the forest, where the air is crisp and the moss is thick, Two mushroom marvels are having a meat cute. On one side, we've got the robust Boletus. Think of it as the heavyweight champ of the mushroom world. Pause for effect. And on the other, the striking red toadstool, flashy and fabulous, like the supermodel of the fungi family. These two might look like they're from different worlds. One's all about earthy vibes, while the other's practically a pop star. But together, they create a magical scene that makes you wonder, what other secrets does the forest floor hold? So next time you're out for a nature walk, keep your eyes peeled. You might just stumble upon a mushroom meeting that'll leave you in awe. Nature's full of surprises, and sometimes they're right under your feet. Shady places on the roadsides, covered with tall pines, covered with moss and heather, usually constitute an excellent substrate for Boletus. For growing mushrooms in your own garden, the most natural habitats will be most beneficial. If our plot contains forest fragments, inoculating the mycelium will certainly bring results. However, in the case of a typical urban plot, when the garden was established from the beginning, we can try to use a small space for the cultivation of mycelium and plant shrubs, conifers and plants that favor the establishment and growth of the mycelium. Mushrooms, and their individual varieties, need symbiosis with specific tree species to develop. The phenomenon of this interdependence is called mycorrhiza-like cooperation for the proper development of fungi and plants. Beletes like the neighborhood of oaks, beeches, and spruces the most. However, depending on the Boletus species, the growing conditions and soil conditions will be slightly different. Oak is the tree most favored by the Boletus, also known as the edible Bolete, but it also likes spruces. Boletus edulis occurs in both coniferous, deciduous, and mixed forests. This fungus forms mycorrhiza with numerous tree species, but mainly with spruces, which is why it is most abundant in mountain spruce stands. It prefers stands in the middle age class, in older coniferous stands it is replaced by the brown pod fungus. Fruiting bodies appear most often and most abundantly in the period from May to November, they also occur in December. Fruiting bodies grow singly, often in small groups of several, sometimes they also form circles. For the proper development of Boletus edulis, not only the roots of the right tree species are needed. On the surface of the bark, it forms rhizomorphs, clearly visible to the naked eye mycelial cords that spread in the soil in different directions and form impressive fruiting bodies. However for the hyphae of its mycelium to connect with the tree roots, there must be bacteria of the genus Pseudomonas in the substrate. Yellow-brown Belete, Butyribeletus appendiculatus. A rare species in Poland. It is on the red list of plants and fungi of Poland. 
It occurs in warm deciduous forests under oaks and beeches, but is also found in coniferous forests under fir trees and on calcareous soils. Boletus reticulatus, it is one of the earliest tubular mushrooms to appear. It grows abundantly from May to early October and even until mid-November. It can be found in deciduous, mixed and rarely coniferous forests, and even outside the forest on the banks of ponds and in parks. It forms mycorrhiza mainly with oaks, beeches, hornbeams, and lindens. In some areas, especially at higher altitudes, its growth has also been recorded under spruces, firs and pines. Pine Bolet Boletus Panophilus Pilot and Dermec. It grows mainly under pine trees, but also under beech trees, on acidic soils. Fruit bodies often appear as early as May and continue until October, with the greatest abundance at the beginning of the season. Dark Brown Bolet Boletus Arius Bull. A very rare species in Poland. It is on the red list of plants and fungi of Poland. It grows in deciduous forests, under oaks, beeches, and chestnuts. A thermophilic species. Fruiting bodies grow from May to September. Red Boletus, Red Bolet, Red Bolet Neobolitus erythropus. Young fruiting bodies may be confused with the yellow-legged Bolet Calobolitus calopus because both mushrooms often occur simultaneously in the same area. The most important distinguishing features of the red boletus are, hyphae on the stem instead of a net, red tubes instead of yellow, only in older fruiting bodies and a darker cap. The Swilellus quellatii is also similar, but has an olive-brown, orange-red or brick-red cap, orange pores and a carmine-red stipe at the base. It is quite common in Poland. It grows in deciduous and coniferous forests from May to late autumn. It is much more common in the mountains than in the lowlands. The typical variety occurs mainly under firs, hornbeams, beeches, spruces, pedunculate oaks and lindens, the daffodil variety under oaks and beeches. The daffodil variety is very rare in Poland. It is on the red list of plants and fungi of Poland. The red belete likes deciduous and coniferous forests. In lowland areas it grows under beech and oak trees, while in mountainous areas it forms mycorrhiza with fir and spruce trees. The slender belete, the so-called American belete. Oreo belitus projectellus horlig. In Poland, it is present in Podlasy and in the forests of the Baltic Sea. It is abundant in the area from Sawaki to Labor. It occurs in the surroundings of Scots pine and mountain pine, with which it is associated with mycorrhiza. In Poland, it is most often found in sandy habitats, for example on pine overgrown dunes or heathlands, hence one of its common species names. So, if you want to grow Boletus mushrooms, just bring some old, mature, fully developed mushrooms from the forest, where there are mushroom spores, thanks to which the mushroom spreads. They can even be worm infested, their spore tubes are important. We take such a mushroom together with the mycelium, with the roots of the mushrooms, which form mycorrhiza with a given tree species. Crush such mushrooms and pour rainwater over them, which must not contain chlorine. Additionally, add yeast and sugar, which provide food and a stimulator for the mycelium. Dissolve a cube of fresh yeast in a glass of warm water. Add three tablespoons of sugar and three tablespoons of flour, mix and set aside for an hour, then add to the mushrooms. Sugar is a source of food for yeast and flour for mushrooms, and sugar is also a growth stimulator for mycelium. Research conducted by scientists from the Iraqi Journal of Agricultural Sciences in 2013 showed an increase in oyster mushroom yield by 50% after adding yeast. The results showed that yield and biological efficiency increased with increasing yeast extract concentration. If your mushroom harvest looks like a sad salad, you're missing out on the magic of yeast extract. Researchers at the Iraqi Institute of Sciences have made an exciting discovery. By adding yeast extract to oyster mushrooms, they boosted the yield significantly. Why does this work? Yeast extract is packed with essential nutrients that mushrooms love. It acts like a superfood giving mushrooms the extra energy they need to grow bigger and faster. Imagine harvesting double the mushrooms without extra work. It's a game changer for mushroom growers everywhere. So next time you're tending to your fungi, 
Think about adding a sprinkle of yeast extract. Your future mushroom harvest will thank you. Pour a bucket of water over everything and leave it outside for two to three weeks, covered with a cloth. It must have access to oxygen. If luck is not on your side and you cannot find beletes in the forest, mycelium producers offer specially prepared vaccines containing the so-called live mycorrhizal mycelium. Like live mycelial hyphae, ready to immediately colonize the roots. The best conditions for the development of mycorrhizal fungi occur in spring and autumn. And then it is best to use preparations with mycorrhiza. Mycelium can be applied from March to October, but the most suitable time for Boletus is August, September, and October. September is the peak period for the occurrence of Boletus edulis. Then there are the best natural conditions for the dispersal of spores and the application of mycelium. The place where the mycelium is applied should be coniferous or deciduous trees, such as the previously mentioned beech, oak, spruce, and pine. It is common in both coniferous, deciduous, and mixed forests. Although it has mycorrhizas with many tree species, its mycelium is most often associated with spruces. It is preferable when the trees are relatively young, about 5 to 10 years old. It is recommended to use ready-made gardening soil with a high content of deacidified peat or soil from the forest as a substrate. In the case of edible forest mushrooms, it is best to apply in periods when the soil is wet and when the ground temperature exceeds 10 degrees Celsius, ideal conditions prevail in spring and autumn. For successful cultivation, at least three trees of a given species for a specific type of mushroom are needed, with which the mycelial hyphae will be able to enter the mycorrhiza. The more trees, the greater the chance of obtaining a mushroom fruiting body. Dig holes around the tree trunk with a diameter of 30 to 40 centimeters and a depth of 15 centimeters. The holes should be dug at a distance of 0.5 to 5 meters, approx 10 trunk diameters from the tree trunk. The next step is to make the perfect substrate for Boletus. Mix the solution with crushed mushrooms or mycelium from the package with 5 liters of peat, preferably fibrous peat, 1 liter of charcoal, instead of charcoal. You can use ash from a bonfire or fireplace where only wood was burned. To improve the parameters of the soil structure and to improve air and water conditions, it is worth using an additional 0.5 liter of gypsum and 0.5 liter of vermiculite or perlite. We moisten the prepared substrate. We use gypsum, not lime, because gypsum does not change the pH of the soil. Next, dig a few small holes around the tree, preferably so that the roots are visible, pour in about 0.5 liters of previously prepared substrate and cover with a 5 cm layer of soil. The whole thing should be beaten thoroughly. The younger the tree, the closer you need to apply the mycelium. Water the application site thoroughly, one bucket of water around each hole. The sowing site should be covered with a layer of bark, leaves, moss or twigs, preferably straight from the forest, but store-bought bark from a bag will work, as it often also contains spores of e.g. morel. A good practice is to pour sugar solution at the place where the mycelium is applied, which has a positive effect on the development of fungi. It is a kind of fertilizer for mushrooms that improves and increases their development and multiplication. Prepare it with 10 grams of sugar and 10 liters of water, add a cube of yeast and set aside for 2 hours. Then we water the soil with the solution. From time to time, the plantation can be watered with a small amount of water, especially if there has been no rainfall for 2 weeks. During the fruiting period, in the absence of rainfall, it is recommended to moisten the soil periodically. Under favorable conditions, Mushrooms may appear after the first or second year after planting the mycelium. In the case of amateur cultivation of mycorrhizal forest mushrooms, under appropriate weather conditions and other factors, you can count on harvests relatively quickly. Although it should be remembered that Boletus is the most difficult mushroom to obtain. The optimal temperature for mushrooms is between plus 18 and plus 28 degrees Celsius. They can also grow in a slightly cooler environment. However, the minimum temperature is plus 3.5 degrees Celsius. Mushroom spores are already starting to grow. 
It should be remembered that in the summer and autumn the mass appearance of mushroom fruiting bodies is strongly dependent on a combination of factors such as available moisture in the substrate, current rainfall and air humidity, air temperature and the natural rhythm of mycelium development of a given species. During the peak season, fast-growing mushrooms are butter mushrooms and belete mushrooms, even within one day, that are so-called soft mushrooms. Belites and bay belites grow much slower. We have to wait from 1 to 10 days for a representative of these species.